My name is uh, Leila Jarlu. I'm from an organisation called Eco Innovators, and I'm an industrial designer, and I work in sustainability. Design is a really important and influential aspect of society. You guys wouldn't realise that every day you encounter things that have been designed, they've been intentionally created with particular motivations. When you are engaging in design as a practice, you're actually, you're actually um, basically having the power to influence other people. So it's really important when you are being creative, which is what design is about, is that you do it with a level of responsibility and understanding of the impacts of the decisions that you make. What I'm going to explain to you now is how you can integrate this stuff into the design of your products, and that's through what's called eco-design strategies. Design to dematerialize. Dematerialization is about making sure that you've used the least materials required in order to achieve the functionalities that you need. So, this means, it doesn't mean just, you know, using thinner pieces of wood, it's actually about making sure that you've tested the optimum thickness or availability of the materials to achieve your functionality. Also, there's some really innovative things that have happened around dematerialization, like honeycombed wood structures, all different types of materials that are basically about light weighting, because usually the lighter the material, the product, the less of the environmental impacts, because the weight of the products tend to dictate the amount of material, and as we've all learned today, materials have high embodied impacts. The more materials you have, therefore the greater the impacts, yeah? Design for durability. As the name would imply, it's about making things that last longer, that are more durable. It's about material selection. It's about understanding the potential failings of a product when it's being used. So if you're designing a chair or a table, you would design it to withhold a particular amount of weight. So you would need to make sure you select the right materials to be able to withstand that weight. So if you were designing a chair for school, for example, you would definitely be testing on how much resistance the back legs have because everyone swings on it. That's the kinds of things you need to consider when you're designing for durability. Because if you're applying durability, then you need to justify the material selection and the different design resolutions in order to quantify this design process, yeah? Okay, the next one is design for longevity. As the name also implies, it's about making things last longer. Design for longevity is really interesting because a lot of products are designed um, for disposability, but also they're designed uh, with lower grade materials and perhaps even the aesthetics of it is very much related to a design movement. So whatever particular aesthetical thing is popular at the time um, is employed. Fashion, it's a trend then is, it means it's likely to make that product obsolete because people are going to value it in the long run. So longevity is about value offering to the consumer and it's also about how you choose your materials and your processes so that you can increase the likelihood of that product lasting longer but also being valued longer. That's a really important thing. It's more like a value proposition. Whereas design for durability is proving that that product will actually be durable in the design. Longevity is about making decisions that mean that it's going to be valued and reused for a longer period of time. Okay, design for recyclability. This is one that people often love to get uh, embraced, but the idea of monomaterials. Mono so these tables that we're looking at right here have at least uh, three different materials in there and they're really well. Um, but the idea is, is if you design with singular materials, if you can, if you can avoid coupling materials, then you're likely to increase its ability to be recycled. Because if, if I was to try and recycle this, it would be quite complicated because whilst these legs are really valuable in the recycling system, this top is contaminating the likelihood of this being recycled, yeah? So making sure that you've selected the right types of materials that can be recycled within the system and also reducing the amount of materials and where possible also making the components fit together so they can be easily pulled apart, which is another one which I'll get to. Um, Multifunctionality is also really important. So the idea behind that is that you have a, if you have a product that has one particular purpose, its core function, Try and find ways of increasing a series of functions. So I was talking to some um, VizCom students a couple days ago, and an example that I use is, 
Say you were going to create a, um, a flyer or a leaflet that you need to communicate something to, they will, the user would usually get that information and throw it out. And an example of multifunctionality would be to say, add a calendar to it or something else that would provide a different value or functionality to the user so it's maybe they'll keep it longer and maybe that'll replace something else so they maybe then don't go and buy another calendar as a result of having that. So the idea of multifunctionality is integrating those different, different options into your product. Design for disassembly. Disassembly, this is kind of related to the recyclability one. So you'll notice that a lot of these strategies you can use in isolation or in, in combination. So the idea behind design for disassembly is that you've actively chosen assembly and disassembly methods that are easy to employ so that things will be recycled. So reducing glutes, looking at different connection methods that mean that things can be easily pulled apart. All of these things allow for a quicker and easier disassembly which would increase the likelihood of materials being reused or recycled at the end of life. Yeah?